felt his love before. But I'm sure you can bear witness to his love this morning. He said, no, I'm with you, even to the end of the age. Always with us. Ever present, God. Ever present. And he, he manifests himself even when we feel that he's not available, when we feel like he's not there. Before you know it, all of a sudden he shows up. I believe God is showing up for somebody this season. I don't know about you, but somebody here this morning, you may be in the high of the storm. But I want you to know that God is showing up for you this season. I cannot hear your amen. I said, God is showing up for you this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Will you lift your two hands to Jesus this morning? And just say, Lord, I recognize your presence all around me. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your grace around my life. I appreciate your grace around my life. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your presence all around me. Maybe somebody is in the high of the storm this morning. Will you also speak to him about that situation? It's not too early in the service for you to bring your petition before the Lord. Maybe somebody is just getting off the high of the storm and the devil is telling you that affliction is coming again. Will you lay hold on divine presence this morning and let the devil know that affliction shall not arise a second time. The storm is over. The siege is over. Somebody may be here this morning, it looks like the storm is about to take you away. And I think it's a good time in this service this morning for you to proclaim to the devil that Jesus is still in my boat. Jesus is still in my boat. So I will remain steady and steadfast in the midst of the storm. This storm will come to pass. It will come to pass. It has come to pass. <laughs> it has come to pass. It has come to pass. The one who has the power to steal storms is in this service this morning. The one that winds and waves obey is in this service this morning. His power is here and His grace is here. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for your grace. Everyone lift your two hands with me this morning as we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we submit all to you today. We submit all to you today. We submit all to you today. Even in the midst of our storm, we know you are always in control. So we leverage on your presence, your corporate presence here this morning. For everyone here present, everyone watching on the internet, we speak to every storm. We command you, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask again this morning that you help us to anchor. You help us to stay steady. You help us to stay steadfast. We receive peace over every heart. We stand against the spirit of fear. We stand against anxiety. We break the hold of timidity. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand against the harassment of every affliction. Affliction in the body. Affliction in the mind. Affliction in business. We stand against such in the name of Jesus. We stand against affliction in families. We declare this morning that your power comes upon everyone. And we declare mighty deliverances this season. We give you glory and we give you praise. Lord, for someone here this morning who seems to be stranded, I receive the spirit of wisdom. From this service this morning, the peace of God comes upon your heart. That peace comes with the wisdom of God. You will know the next thing to do. And as you move, God will move with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody happy to be in God's presence this morning. Put your hands together to celebrate Jesus. Yeah, I know it's still very early in the morning, but I, I needed to put some strength to that clap. Let's appreciate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, please look at your neighbor, smile at your neighbor, and tell them it's good to sit beside you. 
And will you quickly help me ask them, how was your week? I declare in the name of Jesus that this new week is coming with new blessings for you. God will order your steps this week to be at the right place at the right time with the right people. Uh, it shall be the right discussions. And God will show up for you this week. If you believe that, say, believe in amen. amen. Glory be to Jesus. I want to encourage someone here this morning. Guard the peace of God in your heart this week. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't allow the enemy to steal your peace this week. Yeah. Just, just mount God over your peace this week. Though the mountains may cave in and, uh, you know, everything may go upside down. But if you just allow the peace of God to, to, to remain steadfast in your heart, what you see is the hand of God. Yeah. What you see is the hand of God. God is still in the business of showing up in the midst of the storm. But the storm may be around you, but the storm must not enter your heart. Yeah. The storm must not enter your heart. Because it's the state of your heart that invites divine presence. Are you still with me this morning? Yeah. It's the state of your heart that brings in divine presence. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I want you to know that anything that may be dying around you, Jesus is resurrecting them this week. They came to meet Jesus and they said, your friend Lazarus is dead. For somebody, it may be a relationship, it may be a business, it may be anything. Jesus said, he is not dead, he is asleep. Death could not enter into his spirit, into his heart. So he did not proclaim death with them. This sorrow was going on around, something else was going on within. So protect your peace this week. Protect your joy this week. So that, you, you, you know, when you protect your peace and your joy, you invite divine assistance. You activate divine presence. God is present everywhere and in every life, but he's not actively present in certain places. Yeah. One of the ways we activate his presence, we make his presence active, is the peace of God in our heart. Yeah. Is to demonstrate joy. Because wherever joy is, God will be present. Presence is activated. Are you still with me this morning? I said, are you still with me this morning? Let's dive into the word of God this morning. And I'm going to start out from Ephesians uh, chapter 5. I'll read from uh, verse 14. I, I love to remind us, we've been on this series of teachings that were tagged, anchored, and we've talked about the need for us to take responsibility for our spirit. That in 2017, you need to take responsibility for your spirit. We talk about cultivating a strong spirit, a strong spirit. How do you cultivate a strong spirit? And I want to encourage somebody uh, uh, to get, you know, the messages from this series any way it suits you, whether it's the e-copy, the CD, whatever suits you, uh, uh, the, the podcast, the free download, anyone that suits you, please get the messages of this series. It's been interesting even for me, teaching uh, um, and for my team, it's been interesting. We're learning a lot from just, you know, diving into the world to prepare for, for, for this series. Last Sunday, we're talking about new depths, how, how to get into new depths with God through the spiritual discipline of meditation in the Word of God. And you glean and juice out revelation knowledge from the Word of God that can keep your heart steady. So that when men say there's casting down, you can say there's a lifting up. You can't, you know, allow your spiritual life to just pan out anyhow this season. You have to take responsibility for it. So we've been discussing on how you anchor your spirit and anchor your heart on Jesus. Especially at this time that God said we must keep our heart steady and steadfast. In 2017, we need to be steady and steadfast if we will lay hold on the things that he has prepared for us. So get all the messages and, and, uh, and listen to them, meditate on them. This morning, uh, I've titled this Mind the Gap. Tell your neighbor, say Mind the Gap. Or tell somebody, else, say Mind the Gap. Ephesians chapter 5, when you read from verse 14, 15, and 16 uh, from the New King James translation, it says, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. He says, uh, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. See then that you walk circumspectly. Be circumspect 
with the way you walk and live. To remain steady and steadfast, you need to be circumspect in the way you live, in the way you walk, in the places that you tread upon. And we're discussing this morning, mining, uh, minding the gap. For you to be able to mind the gap, you must be somebody who walks circumspectly. I love uh, um, uh, the message translation of verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 5. It says, use your head. <laughs> Make most of every opportunity. Okay, it says, climb out of the coffin from verse 15. Climb out of the coffin and Christ will show you light. It says, so watch your steps, use your head. Watch your steps, use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. <laughs> How many believe that these are desperate times? Glory be to Jesus. And if you truly believe that these are desperate times, then you must understand that it's time to be circumspect. Desperate times, they say call for desperate measures. But real desperate measures is, according to the message translation, is to use your head and watch your steps. King James says, be circumspect. Be circumspect. At desperate times, you don't walk anyhow. You need to mind the gap. You need to mind the gap between where you are and where you want to go. Part of minding the gap like we've been saying, is to keep a strong spirit. Remember uh, uh, our starting our scripture for this series, Proverbs uh, um, 18 and 14 from Message Translation. A healthy spirit conquers adversity. But what can you do when the spirit is crushed? The Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain, him, sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear in the King James. A strong spirit is one of the ways that you mind the God. Keeping a strong spirit Using your head and watching your steps. Living circumspectly. Climbing out of every kind of coffin. Okay, James says, awake you that sleep. And Christ will give you light. Rise up. Don't be circumspect. Don't live anyhow. Don't walk anyhow. Mind the gap between the realities of your life and the expected hand that Christ has for you. There's always a gap. And when you refuse to mind the gap, things may start to go wrong. A gap is the difference between where you are now and where you ought to be in God. Yeah, that's what I choose to call a gap this morning. The difference between where you are now and where you ought to be in God. That's a gap. Yeah, that's a gap. Gaps affect how we move to our next level. There's always a next level. The Bible says surely there's an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Between where you are and the hand that God has already predetermined and the hand that God had in mind for you, the things that God wants to resolve, resolve for you, the places God wants to take you, we start from your, your, the state of your spirit. Because God will not take you where your spirit cannot guide you or under guard you. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. It starts from taking responsibility for your spiritual development like we said. There's always this gap that you, I need to mind if I'm going to get to my next level in God, I need to mind the gap. I need to be aware that there's a gap. A lot of the time, people are not aware of that. And that's where the admonition to walk circumspectly comes in. You can't walk anyhow this season. You need to uh, reckon with the fact that I need to mind the gap. I need to mind the gap because there's always a gap. There's always a gap. And when gaps persist, you live a disconnected life. When gaps persist, you live a disconnected life. Many people listening to me this morning may be living a disconnected life. A disconnected life is a life that is not anchored on Christ. A disconnected life that is a life that is on, you know, walking and living on quicksand. A disconnected life is a life that is unstable. A disconnected life is a life that is disconnected completely from reality. Can I expand a little bit more on a disconnected life this morning so that you, you understand what I'm saying and you can come along? Many of us have experienced it before. Some of us are in, in it right now, living a disconnected life as we speak. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I've lived a disconnected life before. But, 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 but let, me, let me take us into the scriptures very quickly. Let us examine what it means to live a disconnected life. Twice in the life of David, the great king and great psalmist, the man who walked with God, 
Despite the fact that the Bible recorded that David walked with God twice in his life, in my recent studies, I realized that David lived disconnected, experienced disconnection, proper disconnection and disconnected life, consistent disconnected life. Because when you refuse to mind the gap, it leads to a disconnected life. David lived a disconnected life twice in his life. A disconnected life is that kind of life where you're just living. It's to know, you, you're not minding the end. You're not thinking about where would this lead me to. You are completely disconnected from the realities around your life and the fact that how you are living is not, is not leading anywhere particularly. In fact, it's leading to a, you into a bad place. So in, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, we started with this, uh, talking about David and how he lived his life. David, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 11, the Bible says, sent Joab to war, and it's a time where kings led their people to war. But David decided to stay at home. It was, he, he didn't mind the gap. Maybe it was weariness of soul, or weariness of spirit, or weariness of body, but something happened to David that made him feel like it's time to lounge. Though it, it was supposed to be a time that kings sent their people, to, I mean, or go with their people, led their people to battle, David stayed at home. And while David was lounging, not minding that gap, and asking himself the question, what drained me to the point that I, I'm not feeling like going to war? What drained me? What brought me to this point? David was a mighty man of war. When the things that you used to enjoy doing, they're not looking stale to you, and you're not feeling like, you know, you don't feel like praying, or you don't feel like standing in the gap, you don't feel like, like, you're not even wishing that life can be better. You know, there's a point you can get to that you just feel very, you, you become very complacent. Things are happening around you and just one of those things. Yeah. Somebody is sharing a testimony and it's not even inspiring you. You just feel, well, I've been there. God is good, we know. But yet, you don't have a testimony. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying this morning. Somebody's still here. Yeah. That was where David was. Just sitting down, lounging, and then he saw uh, Bathsheba, you know, having a bath. I'm sure you're tired of hearing that this series, because almost every message we have referred to it. Yeah. And then David decided, okay, that's the babe, get her. And, you know, cut the long story short. They, they con I mean, they, David, not minding the gap, led into a proper disconnected life to the point that, you see, if you read 2 Samuel chapter 11 down to 12, the whole of 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12, you understand what I'm talking about. David got to a point that from a one-night stand, if I may put it that way, it became pregnancy. And instead of him to say, look, how do we manage this pregnancy? Can we sit down with Uriah and iron this out? You know, what, what, what is written in the constitution of Israel if king impregnates somebody's wife? How, how is it resolved? You know, and all that. Or can I just go to God now, knowing that I've been disconnected, or knowing that I didn't mind the gap, and just repent? No, David didn't do that. Manipulation set in. Send for Uriah, Bathsheba's husband. Go to your house. The plan was go and sleep with your wife so that you can carry my baby, and uh, it becomes your baby. Uriah said no. According to the code that I signed when I joined Israel's army, my general Joab cannot be on the field and all the lieutenant, and I will come home and be sleeping with my wife. Thunder will strike me. No, I'm not going to do that. He had fear of God. He was minding the gap. If, if Uriah was not minding the gap in his own life, he would have gone into his house and slept with his wife. Uriah stayed at the king's gate. He didn't go to his house. The next day, David, that manipulative tendency was still there. Not minding the gap consistently will lead you to a disconnected life. David did what? Said, call Uriah, set table. Got him drunk. He thought now, if Uriah gets drunk, uh, if Uriah got drunk, he will go home. And then still sleep with his wife. Uriah said, no. The guy was drunk, but even in his drunken states, <laughs> he still had the presence of mind to know that no, as, as a combatant who has, you know, signed on to the code of the army of Israel, I won't do this. Ah, David's interpretation was that the guy is very heady. Eh, his wallah is too much. Let's take him out. You know, the devil keeps sponsoring thoughts. Yeah, when you are not minding the gap. If somebody listening to me this morning and you are not minding the gap, 
Don't stay in that space. You are, you are asking for a disconnection. Your soul cannot be anchored when you are consistently not minding the gap. That was why Paul, writing in Ephesians 5 there, he said, see that you walk circumspectly. In, the, in, in desperate times, you don't walk anyhow. Because you don't know what landmine you are going to put your leg on. David was in desperate times where he wasn't seeing it. He was just taking action anyhow, anyhow. Got to a point that David said, let's take this guy out. You know, send him to Joab and tell Joab to put him and let Israel retreat, put him in front. The guy was taken out. You see, quite a long story short, by the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 12, God, Bible says, God spoke to Nathan, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 1, God spoke to Nathan the prophet, go and meet David. David was full-blown disconnected life. Go and meet David, tell him the story of his life. How you will know that you are living a disconnected life is that you are so far from reality, somebody will tell you your story and you will not know they're talking about you. Go and tell David. Tell him the parable. The Bible says, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 1, Then the Lord said to Nathan, uh, sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man nothing, had nothing, except one little hill lamb uh, which he had bought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and with his children. Um, it ate of his own food and drank from his own table and lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd and prepared one for the uh, wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Look at verse 3. That's where I'm, I'm in verse 5. That's where I'm going. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. <laughs> David did not know he was judging himself. How disconnected can you get? How disconnected are you as you listen to me this morning from the realities of your life? People are making, I mean, in this kind of season that we're in, people will make silly decisions. People will do stuff. But it starts from not minding the gap. If you want your spirit to be anchored on Jesus, you must always mind the gap. As you do your business, mind the gap. As you live your family life, mind the gap. As you live your personal life, mind the gap. Walk circumspectly. Mind the gap. Any gap that you live there consistently will lead to a disconnected life. Second time, David had a disconnected life. Absalom, his son, demonstrated this loyalty. Killed Amnon, his brother. They, I mean, and then the guy went into exile. Two years in exile, or three years in exile. Nobody has enough time. Joab saw that, ah! David's heart was, you know, towards this guy, but David would not just allow him to come. He was so bitter against his son, he would not allow him to come. And then Joab called for one old woman, widow. And the woman went to act drama for David, like the prophet did again. And, you know, I had, I had two sons. One killed the other. And they now said, by the law of the land, because, and I have only two sons, so, and my husband is dead. And they now said, because he killed his brother, they must kill him too. I will now be a widow without anybody to take care of me. And David said, no, they should not kill your son. It's bad enough that he killed his brother. Let's leave him. Ah, so that you will not be without a son. Ah, the woman now look at him. Your son killed his brother. You have banished him all these years. Forgive him now. Ah, let him go in your heart. Can I speak to somebody this morning? Mind that gap of forgiveness. Forgive him now. Let her go now. Let him go now. Yeah, let him go. David came to the realization of this huge gap <laughs> in his life. I started to slow down. It's true. This woman had been talking about me. You know some of us here this morning, some of us can be so disconnected. We join Jesus to abuse some people. And that, just like the Bible says that 
you need to remove the nepa pole, a Christian pole in your eye, before you talk about the, the, the toothpick in somebody's eye. Yeah. You need to remove the eye tension pole in your own eye, sticking out. All of us can see it, only you cannot see it. I don't know how it happens. <laughs> Yet you are talking about the toothpick in somebody's eye. Yeah. Because you get to work in the office, you sit down and have gist about people. Yet, the gap in your life is so huge, you are not doing anything about it, you are so disconnected from it, and you are talking about somebody fighting a husband. And you, you have not spoken to your father this year. What's the difference? <laughs> are you sitting with me this morning? Yeah, what's the difference? You just refuse to mind the gap. You just refuse to mind, mind the gap. Not minding the gap leads to a disconnected life. Leads to a disconnected life. I, I, I see the same kind of disconnected life in Achan, in Joshua chapter 7. Maybe you need to study the Old Testament more. The way some of us are looking at me as I was talking about these Old Testament characters, I, I can pick it from your eyes that you don't know them. And they need to become your friend. Because there's a lot to learn from them. So in Joshua chapter 7, you read about Achan. You know, so Israel had gone to the camp of the Babylonians and, you know, great spoil and they, they, they said, don't bring anything. Yeah, don't take Babylonian items. Achan took Babylonian garments and maybe a few other things and uh, went, dug the ground in his own tent and hid it there. Now, it happened that some strange things started to happen. And he said that, that there's an accosting amongst the people. Who took anything that is accost? That's something that belongs to the Babylonians. Nobody owned up until they used, they, they went by spirit. They casted lot until they fell on Achan. And then they went into and saw. Now, the question is this, Brother Achan. What do you want to do with Babylonian garment in Israel? Are you going to wear it? Does it have any value if you want to sell it? Because nobody will buy and accost things from you. So what is your own with this thing? If not that there is a disconnected life, completely disconnected from reality, taking decisions that lead nowhere, silly things, crazy stuff, and, and you're not minding the gap. Somebody sit with me this morning. Yeah, just refusing to mind the gap, just doing crazy stuff. Hey, can, what do you want to do with Babylonian garment? Please tell me. Because I just don't understand it. This, this thing will bring a curse, not just upon your household, but upon the whole of Israel. Yet, it can, so disconnected from reality, so disconnected from its next level, decided this is, real, this is what I want. <laughs> and went and hid it in his own house. Until he brought death upon himself and upon his entire lineage. That will not be your testimony. I said that will not be your testimony in the precious name of Jesus. But we need to understand it that living a consistent disconnected life is what leads, I mean, live a, not minding the gap consistently is what leads to a point where you can still call yourself a Christian but you're doing funny stuff and it's not moving you. Completely disconnected from reality. You can't ask yourself, where is this thing leading me to? I can't live like this and be steady and steadfast. I can't live like this and still remain anchored to Jesus. It's just not possible. Things that can cause a gap between you and God. One, I run through this very fast. One, fear. Fear. A lot of the time, fear of making mistakes or fear of the future. You see a gap. I, 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 need, to be, I need to be closer to God. But, well, I don't want to become like some of those fanatics. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want my friends to laugh at me or say that uh, me too, I've joined them or something like that, you know. When are you going to sort a little more? Well, when, when are you going to make peace? You know, when are you going to straighten out this marriage? But you know the gap is there, but just the fear of if I straighten it out, what about if it doesn't work out? Or what about if this woman becomes crazier? Or what about, you know, people just... The devil just brings all kind of things. When are you going to sort this thing out with your business partner? This thing has been lingering and lingering. Uh, the fear of, uh, the guy will think I'm a weak guy if I go to resolve it. And then you leave it there. And you know that that gap is affecting your business. Yeah. 
That gap is draining something. If not physically, spiritually. That gap is eroding the foundation of what you are doing. And then you still sit down there. And just because of fear, do nothing. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. But of love, joy, and of a sound mind. Praise God. Impatience, sometimes, or procrastination. Yeah. Is that impatience or procrastination? Sometimes people will not mind the gap just because they're not patient enough to have the presence of mind. So impatience or procrastination. Sometimes it's procrastination because you're just saying, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, some people here now, you have been at Elevation Church for a while. We say, it's in your mind to take your service to God to the next level. We say, I'll, I'll, I'll do it next month. I'll do membership uh, and I'll do it before June. You know, when people say, I'll do it after Easter, then before, before Christmas, then after Christmas, and before New Year, before you know it, it's not just doing it. That's, 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 that's that procrastination for just simply not being patient enough to get things done at the right time. Ignorance is another one. Having wrong expectations and engaging in unwise comparisons Everything as offshoot of ignorance, not knowing God's stance on a situation. Yeah. Some people are supposed to mind the gap in their finances. You don't give to God. You, you're not a tighter. You're not, you're not bothered about bringing God into your finances. And you say, why? Just ignorance. You, you don't know what it portends. And instead of you to say, I want to know, is there a message on Titan that I should listen to? Is there a book I can read? Or can I just study the Bible myself? Or do I go for counseling? Many marriages are going down right now because the two people have decided to romance ignorance. You don't know why things are not working out and you are not seeking to know why. And you just think that they will sort themselves out along the line. It just doesn't work like that. The gap continues to widen and the moment you leave it like that, you get to a disconnected life. A disconnected life is when two people are married but they are not living married and they are not bothered. And then your friends discuss how somebody has a terrible marriage and you participate in the gist. Like just Samuel and, I mean, Nathan and David just talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a disconnected life. Yeah. Because you are not doing anything. You are not bringing it home to say, okay, how do I address mine? And what's the next point for me? What's the next level for me? What are, what are the next steps for me to take? How do I resolve this issue? This gap must not become something that I've created a structure around my life to live with. I need to resolve this gap somehow. We, I need to move on somehow. Because when you allow the gap to persist, your heart is not going to be stable. That place be, remains a sore point. Where anxiety is coming from, where fear is coming from, you can't be properly anchored and connected that way. When I say protect God's peace in your heart, protect the joy of God in your heart, one of the ways to protect it is to make sure that you mind the gaps so that the devil does not have a place where he brings out, you know, fear from or anxiety from, worry from. Are you still with me this morning? I said, are you still with me this morning? Some people, you know, talk about no inspiration. I just, I just don't have any inspiration for it. I just, I just don't, you know, and it stems from weariness, you know, just waiting to be inspired or waiting for a sign or something, you know, but before you know it, you're not stepping out in faith. In 2 Samuel 32 or so, when the Amalekites came and ravaged David as Siglag and, you know, burned down everything. The Bible says at the end of the day, how did David get out of that situation? David encouraged himself and the Lord is God. Yeah. Yeah. You see, it's not all the time that you sit down and wait for inspiration to come. You have to look for it. Sometimes you have to pray for inspiration. Sometimes the only thing that happens after you have finished praying is just that you are inspired. Or you read a book and get inspired. You don't sit down waiting for inspiration to come to you. Yeah. You don't sit down waiting for inspiration to come to you. You, you go after things that can bring inspiration to you. You have the Holy Ghost. When you prep yourself in the Spirit and you pray, the Holy Spirit also, you know, brings inspiration to your heart. 
or brings things your way that will inspire you. So you need to trust God to be inspired. Don't wait. Don't sit down and say, I'm waiting for inspiration. You know, there's a rhythm, rhythm of life. Uh -huh. When that rhythm comes, I know. Uh -huh. Everybody has gone. You are waiting for a rhythm. <laughs> David has encouraged himself in the Lord is God. He didn't wait for anybody. Just encourage himself in the Lord. You need to trust God. What will bring inspiration into my heart? How can I get inspired again to want to do this thing? How can I be inspired about this business again? How can I be inspired about this marriage again? What picture, what vision can I place ahead of myself? What, what am I seeing that can bring inspiration to my heart again? So I don't, you know, throw in the towel. Are you still here this morning? So are you still here this morning? The last thing that can make a gap remain and get strong is sin. 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 And in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1, the scripture says that sin uh, that you are encompassed with, sin that you are encompassed with a cloud of witnesses. Yeah. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, say, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares. I love what the King James Version says. We say, we so easily beset us. We call it besetting sin. A sin that has become a gap. Every, every time you get there, you fall into the pit. Every time you get there, you're not able to leap over the wall. You're not able to leap over the gap. It's just something that stops you. That's a besetting sin, an ensnaring sin. Yeah, a, a sin that has become familiar. In fact, you have, you, have, you have decided to pick it up as a weakness. And you make an excuse for it as if Jesus did not die for that particular sin. And he did not, he did not give you grace to overcome that particular one. Yeah. Said, which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. But two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith? I said, who is the author and the finisher of our faith? You know what it means to be the author and the finisher? It means that everything in between has sorted, he has sorted out. He's the author and the finisher. The starter and the finisher. The Alpha and the Omega. You are just in between Alpha and Omega and you're freaking out. But somebody did something about both hands. Is somebody still with me this morning? I said, are you still with me this morning? Yeah, somebody did something about both hands. You can't be in between and be freaking out. You need to tell yourself, something has been worked out for me and I just need to step into it. 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 And it's time to step into it. It's time to step into it. So you need to press. You need to press. You need to press. You need to press. In Philippians chapter 3, uh, when you read uh, 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 from verse 10 down to 13, uh, in 13, Paul was writing and he said, this one thing I do, forget the things that are, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. I press. Forgetting the things that are behind, I reach out. King James says, I press forward to do things which are ahead. I press forward to the mark of a higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press forward to the things which are ahead. I reach forward. That's how we close the gap. We have to reach forward. We have to press forward. We have to reach forward. We have to press forward. We have to press forward. Because the author and the finisher has finished everything. Yeah. And we just need to press forward and press into it. Tell your neighbor for me this morning, say press. Say it's time to press. Oh, come and say it again. Say, it's time to press. All through the Bible, you see people who press. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, when you read from verse 25 down to 34, you see there, if I may just touch the hem of his garment. It, she just got information, and that information that Jesus was passing through just gave her enough inspiration to say, though I've suffered many things from many uh, physicians, and I'm now broke, busted, and disgusted, I will still press. I will not allow this gap to persist. I will still press. I will still do something. See, this is what, 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 end of January 2017. You, you, you can't just come into this year and allow the gaps that have been there for years, for all through 2015, 2016, or maybe just 2016, or gaps that have been there for five years to remain. It's time to walk circumspectly and address issues. And address issues. And press. This woman said, if I may just touch the hem of his garment, 
Maybe it will close the gap. Maybe it will close the gap. Maybe this issue shall be resolved. It, our whole issue was the issue of blood. It shall be resolved. Let me just press. Let me just press. The Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus in Mark chapter 7 when you read from the same verse 24. We need healing for my daughter. Jesus said, no, 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 no. The time has not come. I am not sent but to the lordship of the household of Israel. And you are not a Jew. So, a time later, I will be able to reach out to everybody. For now, it's just the lordship of the household of Israel. And if you want to say no. Today, I will press. For somebody here, it may be to cross a line. For some other person, it may just be to turn. For some other persons, it may be to move. For some other persons, it may be to jump. It may be, for some other person, it may be to build something that, that you have refused to build up. Just start to build it. So you can mind this gap once and for all. For some other person, it may just be stop. If David had stopped just at one point, he had tried Uriah, go home, get drunk. At the point of writing that letter, if he had stopped, I'm talking to somebody here this morning, it's time to stop something. Just stop. If David had stopped and refused to write that letter, the record that he has today, he won't be the murderer of Uriah. Yeah. Maybe God will have had mercy. Maybe the son will not have died. Maybe God will not have said, you know what? In your house, the sword shall remain. You know, you know God, God made proclamation over the house of David. That's why his sons were just misbehaving. Absalom killing Amnon and all that. He said the sword will not depart from your house. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't that pronounce, pronouncement came. Not because of Beersheba's adultery. It was because of Uriah's death. That heavy thing would not have come upon David's house if he just stopped. Tap your neighbor to stop. Just tell someone, say stop. Yeah? It's time to stop. It's time to stop something. It's time to move for somebody. It's time to jump for somebody. It's time to build for somebody. It's time to turn around for somebody. Just turn. Just change position. Just turn. Change direction. For somebody else, it's time to cross. The Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus and, you know, Jesus said, well, and the woman said, no, here I have come to stay. <laughs> I'm going to press with you. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> he said, even uh, uh, dogs pick crumbs from the table of their master. So you do, it doesn't have to be children's bread. Just give us crumbs. Eli, that's what we want. Just, just, we, just, we, shall, we just need Eli somehow. Ah. Jesus said, okay, <laughs> this faith is extraordinary. This woman will not take no for an answer but to close this gap. Is there a gap you need to close this season? It's a round off this morning. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. If it's to jump, jump. If it's to turn, turn. If it's to stop that ungodly relationship, stop it now. Now! In the name of Jesus. Stop it now. And let's know that it's over. Close that gap. Yeah. Close that gap. If you're like David here and you're banished somebody away and in the scheme of things the person is not supposed to be banished it's time to say no 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 it's time to turn turn and go after them bridge every gap 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 glory be to jesus glory be to jesus father we thank you for the power of your presence here today we thank you for the supply of your spirit. We thank you for revelation knowledge from your word. Let this revelation profit somebody's heart here this morning. Lord, I receive grace over your people to close gaps. I receive grace over your people to close gaps. Can I ask right now, stop everything that you're doing. If you are distracted, just close your eyes. Whatever you may be under the influence of my voice. This is a great time, a time of decision, a time of grace. And for every decision that will be made here this morning, I see grace coming upon you. 
Is there anybody ready to bridge the gap? Here this morning. Ready to do anything differently. I don't know what gap it is. But wherever you may be, under the influence of my voice, can I ask that you put your right hand on your forehead? Whoever you may be, you're just bridging one gap. Nobody cares about your gap. I have my own. So focus on yours. Yeah, focus on yours. You just want to break the gap this season. Somebody's saying, I want to jump. Somebody's saying, I want to move. Somebody's saying, I want to cross. I want to turn. Whatever it may be. Will you join me this morning? Put your right hand on your head like this. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Father, I come into an agreement of faith with everyone here this morning making a decision. Everyone here this morning making a decision to bridge a gap. Everyone here this morning making a decision to, to turn, a decision to jump, a decision to stop, a decision to turn around. I decree in the name of Jesus, let your grace rest upon your sons and daughters. Give us grace to break the gap. I receive the power of inspiration for somebody here. I receive strength for somebody here. I curse the spirit of discouragement. I break the hold of the spirit of fear. And I decree for someone here this morning, there's a new beginning for you. There's a new beginning for you. There's a new beginning for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory and we give you praise. See, with all eyes bowed and all eyes closed, I'd love to pray for anyone here this morning who may be saying, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to ask that Jesus will come into your life right now. I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Or maybe you said a prayer before, accepting Christ into your heart, and then you backslid into sin, and you've never made a return to Jesus. But you know right now that you're so disconnected from God, and that's a major gap major gap that you need to break this morning. Wherever you may be sitting here right now, can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head and say a prayer with me. Just lift your right hand above your head and say a prayer with me. If you know, I need to submit my life to Jesus or I need to rededicate my life to Jesus because I'm so far away from God. Will you lift your right hand above your head this morning and say a prayer with me. God will come into your life and you'll never be the same again. Something new will start in your life from this point forward. Is anyone like that? I'm expecting your hand up right now. If God is touching your heart to join this prayer, don't procrastinate. Don't give any excuse. Just go ahead and join the prayer. Go ahead and join the prayer. Something new will start in your life from this moment forward. Thank you for your hand. If you are lifting your hand, please lift it well. It's not to the pastor, it's to God. And I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me my sins. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning from this moment forward. Keep me safe that I may not hurt you again. Thank you, Father, for